How about another tricky one? Let's make it mm, one third x. Let's complete the square there. So our coefficient of x is one third, and what we're usually doing is, well, I started off saying divide by two, and then I started saying cut in half, and those of those of course are both the same, divide by two or cut it in half. So when I see a fraction, instead of doing the divide by two, I'll find one half of it, do times one half. So times one half is exactly the same as divided by two. That's my preference to stay on track. My middle point is a one-sixth, so x plus one-sixth squared. But it's not a one-sixth that I want in that spot to the second power. One-sixth times one-sixth, one-thirty-sixth. So that was our constant term for this trinomial to make it a perfect square. Okay, same steps. We saw x squared term. We saw regular x term. One-third cut in half gave us one-sixth. There's our x plus one-sixth squared. And one-sixth times one-sixth gave us our third term, one-thirty-sixth. So these are steps. We've, so we still have to do another example. We haven't even hit the, the nastiest ones yet. So stay tuned. Let's do another example. Before we get to some of the nastier completing the square challenges, let's see how we actually put completing the square to use when solving a quadratic equation. So we have x squared plus 2x equals 8. True, we could move that 8 to the left side, set it equal to 0, x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0, solve by factoring. Definitely we could do that. But we're going to make an example out of this one where we complete the square. And what's what I've spotted is I've got my x squared term. I have the plus 2x. So I have the first two terms. If I know what number I need, the constant for that third term to make a perfect square trinomial, then I can solve by doing square roots. So I'll rewrite x squared plus 2x and leave some space. Now pay attention because we're definitely doing things that are different from what we just did just to complete the square. What we did before was just identify what number was needed and then how we would rewrite it as some factor squared. We have to do things because it's actually an equation now. So let's first figure out that number. Positive 2. We cut it in half equals 1 and squared that equals positive 1. So it's plus 1 that we need to complete the square and after I cut it in half and got a 1, I know it's going to be x plus 1 squared. Right? So the coefficient on x, we do that one, divide it by 2 or cut it in half, do something, multiply it by 1 half, somehow cut it in half equals 1, that's the number that shows up down there. Square it is our third term in that trinomial. But if we do, if we want to do plus 1 on one side of the equation, you have to do it on the other side. So that's an important detail about completing the square to solve an equation. When we choose a number for our third term, we need to add it to both sides. So this x plus 1 squared equals 9. We're back to a familiar looking equation. There's that squared term isolated on the left side. So we'll do square root both sides with positive or negative answer. Square root of 9, positive or negative 3. And here, square root and square cancel. x plus 1 equals a positive or negative 3. So let's split it up into the two equations. x plus 1 equals positive 3. x plus 1 equals negative 3. And solve these two equations. Take away 1 each side. x equals neg negative. How about positive 2? This equation isolate x, we'll take away 1, both sides, smash. x equals negative 4. So there are the two solutions that we expect from a quadratic equation.
We did it with completing the square. We completed the square first, and it finishes with square root property, doing square root to both sides. So that's how completing the square is used to solve a quadratic equation. Is it your first choice of how to do it? That's up to you. Let's go ahead and check these answers, just for fun. Of course this is no fun. It's fun for me. You just can fast forward if you just hate it that much. Let's check x equals 2. Alright, is this going to check out? 2 to the second power is 4. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Nice. Let's check the other one. Negative 4. There's our x squared plus 2 times x should equal 8. What am I doing? I'm just looking back to the equation that we started with, x squared plus 2x equals 8, and I'm plugging in numbers for x, so I have some open parentheses where the x's were. There's the negative 4. There's a negative 4. Okay, negative 4 to the second power is positive 16. Let's keep the color scheme going. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and does that equal 8? For sure. Okay, so both answers checked out.